Welcome back to Ask Amy. I have a question today from Catherine, and it's about her daughter. And so I'm going to read Catherine's question on the phone here. Catherine says, um, my daughter has just turned nine, and we're currently staying at home in the UK. We've been lucky with the weather, and today is another beautiful sunny day. I want to get my girls out in the back garden so we can do some exercise, but my nine-year-old is petrified of bees and wasps or anything similar. She has never been stung or had any bad experiences. Um, we have a project to do, and I, I was running, screaming back into the house. It got to the point where she was shaking and in tears. My husband says she's caught the anxiety from me, although I don't have any worries about bees and wasps specifically. I'm concerned now that this will carry on and she won't have any fresh air at all in the summer. She's getting worse with it all recently and threw her bike down yesterday and slammed the door to get away. My mom says to try exposure therapy, but I don't like that idea, and exposure therapy has never worked for me. I'm sure there's something in this understanding I'm not seeing or that could help her, um, sorry if it's long. I wondered if you had any words of wisdom to point in the right direction. So, Catherine, um, I don't put it on yourself that your daughter has caught anxiety from you, um, but notice where you feel anxious and see, see as you have already, as you have already, continue to see what you can see for yourself around worry and anxiety and what if kind of thinking because I just mean that generally. I'm not at all saying that, you're, that your daughter has caught this from you or that that's possible or anything, but the more we see as parents, as human beings, it, we're just coming from a completely different place when we try to help our kids. Teaching something that we don't see very, very hard and it almost never lands sharing something that we do see, totally different story. So, and I shared this with my, when I train coaches, that's where it is almost exclusively in what we see. We are going to be able to see or share, help other people see and share what we deeply know to be the truth. And you're going to do it well, and you're going to do it easily, and you're going to do it naturally when you see it for yourself. So that's why I think a lot of times it's tough as parents that we don't quite see something. Like we're caught up, or we're worried about it, or we have our own stuff, and then we want to help our kids with it. And then we get in all this other thinking that, oh, I probably caused this, or I can't help them, and all of that come back to you because you can only only really share from, from the grounding that you have. So that's just the first thing. But in terms of helping your daughter with this fear of bees, this might sound different than, than what we're used to hearing or, or what you might expect to hear, but just listen. Listen to her. Listen to her as much as she'll let you listen to her. Because between you and me, her fear of bees is, as you know, Catherine, completely made up in her head. There is no, it's not logical, it doesn't make, it's just, she just has a little phobia at the moment of bees, right? But it is a story in her head that looks completely thick and solid and real. Moments anyway, I'm sure it doesn't always look like this to her, but in the moments when she's really freaking out, it looks like I'm in a feeling that I can't handle and the bees are doing it to me and I need to run and get out of here. So she's in a feeling that she is not okay sitting with, probably in part because it looks very real and it looks like bees are causing it. So you and I, Catherine, know that. This is helpful for you to know that you know that when it goes to helping your daughter because, again, the only issue she's really up against. This isn't about bees. This isn't about anything else. It's not about anxiety. It's not about anything else. It's about her being in this story that looks completely solid. And the more you can talk with her and, and just, just talk with her and just listen and be curious about how it looks to her and be curious about what she sees about that story, the more she's going to relax, the more you're going to see things to say, and the more it's going to keep kind of putting these little dents in her story. So again, remember, she just has thought that looks like it's like this, this armor around her. It just looks absolutely real when she's in it. But then when her mind settles down, she can see that it's not real. 
as we all can. When our mind settles down already, some little dents are easier to get in there. So our job with anyone, especially with a nine-year-old daughter, but with anyone, again, I go think about my coaches, this is the same thing we're looking at there. Our job is to know that this person is totally fine, whoever they are, they're totally fine. The only thing they're up against is thought that looks real. And that the more we're just there with them in the moment, listening, sharing what occurs to us. But it's so much less about the sharing and teaching part than it is about the listening and letting them speak and letting them be heard part, letting them feel whatever they feel part. That is going to automatically start to put a lot of dents in that story that looks really solid. It's already their story is going to start to melt. And then it takes so little from you, a little pointer, a little thing here or there to actually get through so that she can hear that. So I hope that makes sense. Don't think about it too much because now your mind might be saying, well, how do I listen and what should I say? And how much should I listen? It's so much simpler than it seems. The more we're just a place for people to just talk and get stuff out and you can listen and reassure her that she's okay, things will occur to you because you've seen a lot, Catherine, you know how this works. So things will occur to you to just interject little by little, especially with our kids. They don't want to hear us teaching. They don't want to hear us lecturing. That's the last thing. They're, they're going to shut right down when they hear that. So don't be that. Just be curious. Just be curious. Like, isn't it interesting? First, just let her share. Let her talk about what's so scary about bees and what this is all about. And then, and then just just like, wow, isn't it interesting that you've never even been stung by a bee? Like, what is your mind telling you about that? And she'll probably tell you. Her mind has a whole story about what it would mean and why it's scary and all of that. But isn't that interesting? And isn't it interesting? The bee is just buzzing around you. It's not even touching you. It's not even doing anything. But look at what you feel. Isn't that interesting? And you just get into this little dance with her where she's starting to think, huh, she's just seeing it in a new way without you having to come in and teach her anything differently or even help her. It's, an, it's not even a conversation of helping so much. It's like, wow, what do you see about that? Isn't that, isn't that fascinating? And help her see, you know, little by little, very subtly, help her see, wow, what this is all about is your mind creates a story and you feel something uncomfortable. And me too, you, you will tell her. I, me too, and your father too, and your grandmother too. We all feel uncomfortable stuff at times. And that's just part of being human. But you know what's cool about feelings? We can feel them. They Sometimes they're really uncomfortable, but it is, it's okay. It doesn't hurt us. They just come and go. They move right through us. They can get really strong at times. And you can want to throw your bike down and run in the house. And that's fine if that's what occurs to you to do. But also know that if you just waited, like whatever you did, that feeling is going to pass. That feeling is just energy and it's safe. And like you get into those types of conversations where you, you talking about a nine-year-old daughter, but in general, like you are doing so much more listening, maybe 90% listening, 10% sharing but you're just getting curious about how she sees it and that will inform little things that little threads that you can follow up on to open this up for her ultimately helping her see oh wow my mind is creating this fear it's all it's all a thought and some feeling and then you get to help her keep seeing that not about bees anymore you're going to see a huge change Help her see. This isn't your mind has said the bee is the scary thing, but it's you're you're feeling your thoughts. You're not feeling a bee. Bees have nothing to do with this. So in whatever way makes sense to you in conversation with your daughter, you help her see that. And that's how it goes, right? The bee is no longer the thing automatically. I'm not saying it's gone, but but you see a big shift. And then you just keep keep getting to kind of open more and more into that conversation. So I hope this is helpful, Catherine, and to anyone who's wanting to share any of this with anyone in your life, so much more about listening than teaching. And then it's like following your own hunches to just open this up and help put some dents in their story. Because remember, the only thing that's creating them suffering, whoever they are, whatever they're suffering around, no exceptions ever, is that they have a story that doesn't look like a story. 
They have thought that looks absolutely real and it's scary. And we have feelings that we think are real and harmful and it can be scary. But when we start to poke some holes, it gets so much easier. So thank you for sending your question. Really hope this is helpful. And um, anywhere, everyone send your questions about feelings, thoughts, helping people through this time, through any time, habits, anxiety, depression, any of that to ask Amy at the little school of big change.com. And I'm here every Monday answering your questions. So stay healthy and well, and I'll see you next Monday. Bye everyone.